Hey there, pilots. This is Dauntless Sam, and today we'll be looking at the history of the Fiat CR42 Falco and its flight characteristics in War Thunder. The Fiat CR42 Falco, also translated as Falcon, was a single-seat biplane fighter which served primarily with the Italian Royal Air Force before and during World War II. The aircraft was produced by the Turin firm and entered service in smaller numbers with the air forces of Belgium, Sweden, and Hungary. With more than 1,800 built, it was the most widely produced Italian aircraft to take part in World War II. The Fiat CR-42 was the last of the Fiat biplane fighters to enter the frontline service as a fighter, and represented the epitome of the type. RAF intelligence praised its exceptional maneuverability, further noting that the plane was immensely strong, though it stood little chance against faster, more heavily armed monoplanes. It performed at its best with the Hungarian Air Force on the Eastern Front, where it had a kill-to-loss ratio of 12 to 1. The CR-42 was an evolutionary design based on the earlier Fiat CR-32, which was in turn derived from the Fiat CR-30 series created in 1932. The Italian Air Force had employed the CR-32 during the Spanish Civil War with great success, which led to Fiat proposing a more advanced fighter based around the supercharged Fiat A74R1C-38 air-cooled radial engine geared to drive a metal three-blade Fiat Hamilton Standard 3D41-1 propeller of 2.9 meters in diameter, and a robust, clean sesquiplane design. The rigidly braced wings covered with fabric were constructed from light duralumin alloy and steel. It reached a top speed of 438 kilometers an hour at 5,300 meters and 342 kilometers an hour at ground level. Its climb rate was 1 minute and 25 seconds to 1,000 meters and of 7 minutes and 20 seconds to 6,000 meters. In spite of the biplane configuration, the CR-42 was a modern, sleek-looking design based around a strong steel and alloy frame incorporating an NACA cowling housing, the radial engine, with fairings for the fixed main landing gear. The CR-42's upper wing was larger than its lower wing, a configuration known as a sesquiplane. The aircraft proved exceptionally agile thanks to its very low wing loading, although at the same time, the CR-42 lacked armor and radio equipment. During evaluation, the CR-42 was tested against the Caproni CA-165 biplane fighter and was judged to be superior, although the CA-165 was a more modern design which boasted a higher speed at the cost of maneuverability. Although the age of the biplane was coming to an end, a number of air forces expressed interest in the new fighter, and a number of early Falcos were delivered to foreign customers. Soon after its combat introduction, Fiat developed a number of variants, the CR-42BIS and CR-42TER had increased firepower, and the CR-42N was a night fighter, the CR-42AS was optimized for ground attack, and the CR-42B by Posto was a two-seat trainer. The by Posto was the most extensively modified, with a longer fuselage allowing a second seat to be placed in tandem. About 40 aircraft were produced by Augusta and Caproni Trento. Its length was increased by 68 centimeters over the standard fighter, to a total of 8.94 meters. The height was also 23 centimeters less. Empty weight was only 40 kilograms more, as the wheel fairings had been removed. Overall weight was 2,300 kilograms, and it had a top speed of 430 kilometers an hour, only 8 kilometers an hour less. Up to 1945, two machine guns were fitted. The CR42DB was an attempt to improve the type's performance by installing a Dahmer Benz DB601 V12 engine. The project was cancelled as the biplane configuration did not offer any advantages over contemporary monoplane fighter designs. Although it never went into production, to this day the variant has the distinction of being the fastest biplane ever flown. It is still not certain how many CR42s were built. The most likely estimate is 1,819 in total, including the 63 produced under Luftwaffe control and 140 produced for export. The Fiat CR42 entered service in May 1939. By the time Italy entered World War II on the 10th of June 1940, 
About 300 aircraft had been delivered. The Falcons defended airfields, cities, and the Italian Royal Navy bases until the Italian armistice with Allies on the 8th of September 1943. The Falcons also fought against the British Gloucester Gladiator over Malta, and later against British Hawker Hurricanes, sometimes with unexpected success. The maneuverability of the Falcon concerned the British. An RAF intelligence report late in October 1940 circulated to all pilots and their squadrons, with copies to Prime Minister Winston Churchill and the War Cabinet, and it declared, The maneuverability of the CR-42s, in particular to their capacity to execute an extremely tight half-roll, has caused considerable surprise to other pilots and undoubtedly saved many Italian fighters from destruction. When production was stopped in 1942, a total of 1,784 CR-42s had been built. By September 8, 1943, when Italy surrendered to the Allies, only around 60 of the aircraft were in flying condition. On the 13th of June, 1940, 23 pilots escorted 10 Fiat BR-20 bombers to the port of Toulon. Meanwhile, 12 Falcon attacked the airfield of Fayence in province, causing little damage. Later, they attacked Hyra's base, hitting on the ground approximately 50 enemy aircraft and destroying at least 20 of them. On the 15th of June, 67 CR-42s attacked the airfields of southern France. 27 biplanes machine-gunned the airfields of Cures Pierfo, setting on fire about 15 V-156Fs. Seven of the Fiats giving top cover were intercepted by Bloch MB-152s from AC-3 that shot down a Falco and forced another to land. Italian pilots claimed four French fighters. Following the fall of France, an Italian airgroup of CR-42 and BR-20 bombers operated from Belgium in October and November of 1940 and flew some operations in later sieges of the Battle of Britain, but with a high loss rate. The RAF Museum at Hendon, London Today displays a CR-42, which force-landed in Suffolk with a broken oil pipe. Over Malta, the CR-42 encountered hurricanes for the first time on the 3rd of July, 1940. That day, Flying Officer Waters shot down an SM-79 bomber five miles off of Calafrana, but he was soon attacked in turn by the escorting Falcon, who badly shot up his aircraft. Waters crashed on landing, and his hurricane was written off. The hurricane pilots soon discovered that the Italian biplane could easily outmaneuver their aircraft. Pilot Officer Jock Barber remembered, On my first combat, on the 9th of July, I attacked the leader of a squadron of Falcons, while Lieutenant George Bergs attacked an SM-79 bomber. When I shot the CR-42 at range of 100 yards, he did a flick roll and went spinning down, I found myself engaged in dogfighting with the remaining CR-42s. This went down to about 10,000 feet. By then, I had used up all my ammunition without much success. Although I am convinced I got quite a few strikes on the leader in the initial combat, I realized pretty quickly that dogfighting with biplanes was just not on. They were so maneuverable that it was very difficult to get in a shot, and I had to keep diving and turning to keep myself from being shot down. George had by this time disappeared, so I stuck my nose down with full throttle and was very thankful to get out of the way. A week later, a dozen CR-42s appeared in the sky over Malta for reconnaissance. Flight Lieutenants Peter Keebel and Bergs scrambled to intercept them. This was the first air victory in World War II of the CR-42 against the Hurricane. Shortly after the loss, a meeting of all the pilots and senior staff was called to discuss the best way of countering the agile CR-42. A suggestion was made that the Hurricane should put down a bit of flaps, as it might enable them to turn with the CR-42. But the only realistic proposal was to climb above these aircraft, to be in advantageous position. The CR-42 was the main night fighter of the Italian Royal Air Force. The first night interception was performed on the night of August 13th through 14th, 1940, by Captain Graffer, when he located and opened fire on a British Armstrong Whitworth Whitley bomber that had been sent to attack Turin. 
When his guns jammed, Graffer rammed the bomber before bailing out. The bomber had been badly damaged and subsequently crashed into the English Channel whilst attempting to return to its base. One of the most successful night interceptions took place on the night of August 25th, 1942. That day, in an attempt to oppose RAF night intruding missions that were hammering Italian airfields, the 4th Stormo borrowed four radio-equipped CR-42s to use them as night interceptors. On November 11th and 23rd, 1942, CR-42s flew two raids against Great Britain as part of the Corpo Aereo Italiano. Luftwaffe aircraft had difficulty flying in formation with the slower biplanes. Even though slower, with an open cockpit, no radio, and armed with only two machine guns, the Falcon could easily outturn the Hurricanes and the Spitfires and proved difficult to hit. British pilots stated, The CR-42 turned to fight using all the airplane's maneuverability. The pilot could get on my tail in a single turn, so tightly was he able to pull around. As the RAF intelligence report stated, the Falcon were hard targets. As I fired, he half-rolled very tightly and I was completely unable to hold him. So rapid were his maneuvers. I attacked two or three more and fired short bursts. In each case, the enemy aircraft half-rolled very tightly and easily and completely outturned me. In two cases, as they came out of their rolls, they were able to turn in almost on my tail and opened fire on me. Against British monoplanes, the CR-42s were not always outclassed. I engaged one of the British fighters from a range of 40 to 50 meters. Then I saw a Spitfire, which was chasing another CR-42, and I got in range of 150 meters. I realized that in maneuvered flight, the CR-42 could win or survive against Hurricanes and Spitfires, though he had to be careful of a sweep from behind. In my opinion, the English 30 caliber bullet was not very effective. Italian aircraft received many hits, which did no material damage, and one pilot even found that his parachute pack had stopped a bullet. During the winter, the CR-42s were transferred back to the Mediterranean theater. It was in Africa that the nibble Italian biplane performed better. In 1940, three squadrons stationed in Italian East Africa were equipped with CR-42s. Fighting began in June and lasted until autumn of 1941. The Italians met mostly British bombers and reconnaissance aircraft, destroying many of them. On the 12th of June, 1940, the 412th Squadron attacked nine Wickers Wellesley bombers and claimed the first CR-42 victory in East Africa. Dogfights usually occurred when enemy airfields were being attacked. Fierce air battles took place at the beginning of November 1940, during the British offensive against the Italian forts of Galabat and Metma along the Sudan border. The Italian Air Force was dominant in these fights, sometimes even against more powerful opponents. Losses were also suffered in the air duels in 1940. At least six Fiats were destroyed and about a dozen damaged. At the beginning of the war in Italian North Africa, the Falcon was pitted against the contemporary Gloucester Gladiator and Hawker Hart of the South African Air Force. Increasingly evident, the Fiat CR-42 was unable to operate effectively against modern aerial opposition, relying only on maneuverability and the Italian Air Force piloting skills. On the 8th of August, 1940, in an aerial duel between comparable rivals, the Fiat CR-42 was pitted against the Gloucester Gladiator. That air combat highlighted the advantages of the Gladiator over the CR-42, especially radio equipment that could permit coordinated attacks and the Gladiator's superior low altitude overall performance with a markedly superior horizontal maneuverability over the Falcon. The Gladiator was superior to the Fiat regarding the combat equipment also. The 12.7mm machine gun could fire an effective explosive bullet, but the Gladiator's Brownings were able to shoot 2.5 more rounds per second than the synchronized Italian machine guns. However, the CR-42 had a superior performance. It was much faster at 3,000 feet thanks to its smaller wing area, constant speed propeller, and superior power of its engine 
which could provide up to 960 horsepower for short periods at emergency rating. Experienced Italian pilots, most of them veterans of the Spanish Civil War, employed exceptional maneuverability of the CR-42 in successful attacks against RAF gladiators, hurricanes, and spitfires, forcing their opponents to adopt the tactics of Messerschmitt pilots had used against them, to avoid dogfights and to attack them with sudden dives. Nevertheless, on the 31st of October 1940, the Falcons scored their first confirmed air victories in North Africa against the Hawker fighters. The CR-42 was used by several foreign air forces. They were used by the Royal Hungarian Air Force in 1939, the Belgian Air Force in 1940, the Swedish Air Force in 1940 through 1941, and the Luftwaffe during the Italian Armistice. In War Thunder, the CR-42 Falco is the first Italian fighter in the German tech tree. It is also the only Italian biplane in the game. It has a maximum speed of 266 miles per hour and a climb rate of 3,346 feet per minute. As with all biplanes, it is much more maneuverable than monoplanes, but in comparison to other biplanes, it's not as maneuverable as reserve aircraft. When battling other biplanes, Never try to turn fight them and use your superior speed to your advantage. The Falco has a distinct advantage in firepower over other biplanes. The CR-42 is armed with two 12.7 Breda SAFAT machine guns loaded with 800 rounds. This is much more powerful than the usual two 7.7mm machine guns of most other biplanes. Head-on engagements might not be such a bad option with any reserve aircraft. The CR-42 is much more durable than other biplane fighters, though it is a larger target. Don't be afraid to take a few hits from a 7.7mm machine gun in order to take down a target. The Falco represents a turning point in aviation technology and does not have a distinct advantage over all the planes it may be pitted against. While flying this aircraft, it is important to be flexible with your tactics in order to assert your dominance in the air. I hope that this information has proved helpful. If you liked the video, please do like the video. If you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you think anyone else would be interested in this video, don't be afraid to share it. This is Dauntless Sam. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.